I'm uh, Kripa Venkatachalam, and I'm presently responsible at Cadence Design Systems to run the India field engineering team and also the worldwide uh, customer success team focused on um, supporting our customers post sale. Um, roughly more than 20 years now in the semiconductor industry, the first 10 years I was focused on building chips. Getting innovative chips in the market has gone up dramatically. COVID showed us the vulnerabilities of supply chain in uh, chip design and Gen AI has now um, ensured that everybody is building uh, their own custom chips instead of just leaning on third party chips uh, and using hardware as a differentiator. So it's been a fantastic journey uh, to be part of this innovation cycle and uh, glad to be here. AI buzz and Gen AI uh, may, be, uh, may be prevalent only in the last, uh, I think, three years or so when the first chat GPT model came out. But in reality, uh, specifically in the semiconductor industry, we have been using machine learning and AI uh, for a while now. Right? So uh, chip design fundamentally has many complicated problems, which are what we call as NP hard problems, meaning you cannot guarantee a solution in fixed order of time. However, if you propose a solution, you can verify whether that works or not. To extend that, today, um, roughly about 50% of the chips that are getting designed use artificial intelligence in some form or the other. Right? And the expectation is that in the next several years, that will be 90% of the designs. So um, being part of this uh, cycle of helping our customers and leveraging AI to help our customers has just been a very natural, um, natural step in my journey in chip design, uh, supporting my customers. Right? Now, with the advent of um, Gen AI and Chat GPT, and now more recently, you know, much, much uh, smaller and more powerful models just become much more accessible and enables us to serve our customers uh, better. So I stay for what we can bring to our customers in terms of helping them go to market faster, better, with much more innovative solutions. I came here much more as a natural progression because we've been using machine learning and AI in our solutions to power algorithms for a long time now. Women in engineering is a rare species. You know, I wish the number were bigger, but it isn't. Um, I think it's a similar thing that's happening, uh, that will happen, that is happening today, whether it is AI or outside AI, as far as engineering goes. Personally, you know, it hasn't made a big difference to me one way or the other, but uh, anecdotally, I can share something that touched me deep. Um, I was at this conference called Fem AI. There was a speaker um, who is a researcher from MIT. And her research is actually fantastic. She was researching whether uh, vision AI, right, vision artificial intelligence systems are able to identify black women. It was a few years ago. I think the problem is now more or less fixed. Um, but she found it extremely interesting that um, the vision systems at that time were unable to recognize a black woman. right? And they oftentimes mistook um, a black woman to be a man, including some of the famous personalities that we that we know and admire. Right? So this fundamentally shows the vulnerability such systems have. Uh, now, AI is a great, it can be a great equalizing force. But if we are not careful about what kind of biases get introduced into the system and consciously work towards rectifying those, it can actually end up um, doing quite the opposite like being a lot more divisive and being a lot more biased. So I would, I would caution all of us to be watchful of that, to make sure that we are building an equitable society that, that factors all of this in. You must have heard about Reshma Saujani, you know, the founder of Girls Who Code. And, and she, uh, in her book, uh, talks about a particular incident where uh, there is a public classroom and uh, there are girls and boys, fifth graders, I think, who are uh, learning to code. Right? And uh, she, she makes an interesting observation that the boys are asking a lot more questions than the girls are. And when the boys are asking questions um, and the teacher approaches them, boys usually show 
okay, this is how, this is what I tried. This is where I'm stuck. Can you help me? And then many times she found that the girls are, have a blank screen and they just say, I don't know. Can you please help me? Right. And uh, the teacher got curious that how come such smart girls don't have anything to show for their work? But interestingly, she does uh, control Z to undo to see what happened in the screen before she got there. And she found that there was a lot of work that had been attempted and tried, but just not demonstrated. I think that speaks fundamentally to how women think many times, right? This is not to stereotype. Uh, women go after perfection. And when there is a there is a challenge in terms of um, the solution being not right or the answer not being fully baked, chances are that women won't be the first ones in the room to raise their hand and start to talk about it, right? We need to be absolutely sure before we have that conversation. So what I think, um, what's exciting is AI gives you those guardrails, right? So accessible, Gen AI, ChatGPT, Claude, all these things make knowledge so accessible that it is very easy to take control of the situation. And, and uh, if, if expertise is what you desire before you will speak up, you can very quickly build that expertise. Um, so you can use the tool to your advantage and um, be more comfortable coming forward and taking chances because you know that there is an expert tool at your beck and call. I myself have taken advantage of that several times. When there was recently a research problem to be solved, I was able to very quickly bring up Claude and do some quick groundwork, put forth a solution that R&D could then take forward and work through. Right? So I think AI, Gen AI and the tools attached today have made knowledge really accessible and allow for experimentation and gaining knowledge that I hope it'll give us all the confidence to do more, right? to, to raise our hands more uh, compared to what we did before.